so this is a video that I have avoided making for a very long time. Today, I am gonna be talking about the worst colleges in the world, and I'm actually gonna be naming the colleges. Right, so I've avoided making this video for a long time because one, I didn't wanna get sued, and two, I didn't wanna become a drama channel. But with that being said, I think this is a video that I have to make. Now, when I go over these colleges, I'm not just gonna focus on the drama aspect, I'm gonna to try to teach some lessons with each one. You can't just, oh, laugh at you. Oh, are you all right? How did you... But with that being said, the entire college situation in the United States is just an absolute mess. We simultaneously have the best colleges in the world and also the worst. So in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the worst ones. So let's jump right into it right after you gently tap that like button. Let's go ahead and aim for 5,000 likes on this video. Number 10 on the list is going to be the University of Chicago. This is the most expensive university in the United States with an out-of-state cost of $79,356 per year. Now, it takes on average 5.1 years to graduate from college with a bachelor's degree. And so if you do the math there, 79,356 times 5.1, that is $404,715.60. Shame on you, University of Chicago. You should be absolutely embarrassed charging your students that much. <laughs> Now, I'm always gonna call out the schools that charge ridiculous amounts of money. University of Chicago happened to be number one this year. Sometimes it's Harvey Mudd is number one. You know, there's a lot of them that charge way more than what they should. And they are all essentially taking advantage of a system that was designed by the government to help low-income students be able to afford an education. Ever since that system was implemented, the cost of college has gone up exponentially. Now, a lot of these schools are like this. It's not just the University of Chicago. And you might be thinking, well, they have to charge this much in order to give a world-class education. Well, if you look at the University of Harvard, for instance, and don't get me wrong, if you go to the University of Harvard for the right reasons, the network and the connections you can get there can definitely be worth it. But their endowment fund is $53.2 billion. And many theorize that they could actually continue operating the university without taking any tuition from their students indefinitely. But at the very least, they could last 100 years if they stopped charging tuition. That's how much money Harvard has. Harvard is essentially a hedge fund that brands itself as a university. Now you might think it's a little bit messed up that colleges like this are getting rich off of the student debt crisis. And you'd probably be right, but why would the University of Chicago or Harvard get off the gravy train? Student loans are guaranteed by the federal government. So if you can't pay them off like just about any other loan out there, you're not allowed to default on them. So there's basically zero repercussions to colleges just continuing to increase their prices. Number nine on the list is going to be full sale university. University. And the reason I decided to put them on the list is because they actively encourage students to get art degrees that are incredibly unlikely to lead to success. Now, many people accuse them of being a profit mill or a degree mill, and that is going to be a common theme you see in the top 10. So for instance, they offer a show production bachelor's. They also offer a music production bachelor's and a recording arts bachelor's degree. And their average cost before aid is $41,000 a year. Their average cost after aid is about 27,000 and they have a 30% graduation rate, which none of those numbers are great. Now, it's not so much that Full Sail University is a scam in my opinion. I think they do their best and they probably do a relatively good job. It has more to do with the fact that college and art are just not made for each other. College and creativity do not go together. College is old antiquated, stuck in the mud. College is the opposite of creative. There's nothing creative about college at all. It's all about standardizing everything. And you see this when you look at degrees that are about skills that change rapidly all the time, such as marketing. Right now, the most important skill to learn in marketing is digital marketing, of course. Yet most colleges only have one or two classes on digital marketing. And typically, these are incredibly surface level classes where you're not gonna learn anything tangible. So for instance, I looked up marketing curriculum on Google, and this is the first one that popped out, so I'm not like calling this school out, but the University of San Diego has exactly one class on digital marketing and one class on social media marketing. If they were up to date with the times, half of their classes would be on modern forms of marketing such as digital or social media. But colleges are never up to date with the times. When it comes to things that change all the time, like music or art or marketing, colleges simply cannot keep up with them. Colleges are simply too old, 
rigid and slow in order to keep up with modern times. And this is why I took an MBA and I ended up dropping it right away because I realized that I know more about business than the professor does because the last time the professor started a business was like 20 or 30 years ago. And some professors never started a business in their life. So the truth is when it comes to getting paid as an artist, there are a few careers out there where you can get paid, UX, UI design is one of them. I talk about that a little bit on this channel. Digital marketing, some aspects of it are artistic. But for the most part, if you want to get paid as an artist, you're gonna have to do your own thing. You're gonna have to become a freelancer or start your own business. And a college degree simply will not help you with that 99% of the time. And in most cases, a college degree is only going to set you back. It's going to make it harder for you to reach your goals. And I've made several videos talking about my recommendations for creatives, uh, so I'm not really gonna go into that but college is almost never the right answer for artistic people. So watch out for any universities that encourage people to get degrees when they know the person's chances of success are incredibly low, yet they still charge a ridiculously high amount of money. Number eight on the list is going to be Evergreen State College. And this is one that I actually have personal experience with. When I first started regularly uploading on this channel, I actually lived in Northern Washington right next to Evergreen State College. So it's estimated at Evergreen State College, you're gonna spend about $146,000 for your degree. That's already incredibly expensive right off the bat. So what do you get for that $146,000? Well, it's basically the Build-A-Bear workshop of degrees. They essentially allow you to design your own degree at Evergreen State College. So if you want to spend $147,000 on video video game studies, you can do that. If you wanna spend $147,000 on a history of meme studies degree, you can do that. If you wanna spend $147,000 on a flying spaghetti monster studies degree, you can probably do that as well. Now, I'm kidding, but basically that's true. Like you can study just about whatever you want for four years and you can spend a ton of money on it. Now, to be fair, a lot of schools do this where they let students study the most ridiculous topics where their chances of getting a job or their chances of actually using that information to be productive in society is incredibly low, but Evergreen State College just takes it to a completely different level. So I had to include them on this list. Number seven on the list is gonna be Bob Jones University, and they actually forbid interracial dating until the year 2000. Yes, you heard that right. You could not date somebody outside of your race at Bob Jones University until the year 2000. All right, so that's all I have to say about them next. Number six on the list is gonna be one where you've probably seen their ads many times before, and that is going to be Phoenix EDU, also known as the University of Phoenix. So you've probably seen their ads. These days, you need more than an education. And Phoenix is a for-profit university. Now that doesn't automatically mean that they're the worst college ever. Some for-profits are better than others, but typically it is a massive red flag because most of the biggest scam universities are for-profits. And if a hiring manager or business owner sees that you graduated from one of these degree mills, they're probably just gonna throw your resume in the garbage. These for-profit mills are incredibly expensive and they provide very little value for the cost. So I don't really think I need to go over all the horror stories of for-profit universities. I mean, there's just an abundance of material on the internet here. You can just look it up. But I found this question on askamanager.org, which is a website where a manager just answers people's questions about business and careers, etc. And basically it's, should I take the University of Phoenix off of my resume? And this person talks about how they worked super hard to get an MBA from the University of Phoenix. And the answer according to Allison was yes, you should probably just take it off of your resume. So the degree there is not only incredibly expensive it takes years of your life but on top of everything it actually probably sets you back when it comes to your chances of getting a job now the reason this one is only number six on the list is because believe it or not there's other for-profits that are much worse University of Phoenix has actually worked really hard to repair their bad reputation whereas some of these other for-profits have taken up the mantle and they're basically trying to be as terrible as possible number five on the list is going to be Grand Canyon University now you University of Phoenix charges about $398 per unit. Grand Canyon University charges 477. And these types of schools spend much more on marketing than they do on the actual curriculum or the value of their service. Now, according to a ranking website, Grad Reports, where people can basically just talk about their experiences with different universities, they have a three-star rating and 58% of the 605 students said this degree improved their career prospects. 
52% of students said they would recommend this school to others. So typically those numbers are more like 70 to 80%, so much lower than average. And if you get even more specific, you look at their different programs, the accounting program has a 1.5 star rating. Biology has a 1.8 star, but it's okay because the Christian studies program has a 4.19 star rating. Number four on the list is going to be Southern University at New Orleans. And the reason I decided to include them on the list is because they have a 1% four-year graduation rate. That's right. 1% of the people who go into this university end up graduating within four years. To put that in perspective, the University of Notre Dame has a 93% four-year graduation rate. So this is a very common trend that I see with a lot of universities, and it's yet another tactic that they use to make more money. For instance, I consulted with a girl who went to a university where getting a education degree, an education bachelor's, took her seven years. And it wasn't because this girl wasn't bright or anything like that. It all had to do with the university. They made it incredibly difficult for you to graduate with a degree that, let's be honest, is objectively relatively easy. There is no reason why you shouldn't be able to finish your education degree in four years. Yet it took her seven years and it all had to do with the university. I consulted with another student who went to the same university, and in this case, he took a biology degree and it also took him seven years and he didn't even graduate. So this is yet another tactic that these universities are using Using to make more money and it makes sense if it takes you seven years instead of four years for you to get your degree that's an extra three years that you have to pay your tuition that's almost double the money that the university gets number three on the list is another for-profit mill university and that is going to be DeVry allegedly this may be the worst of all the expensive scammy for-profits that are currently operating now remember University of Phoenix costs about three hundred ninety eight dollars per credit it, DeVry costs 514 And what do you get for that extra cost? Well, they have a 20% graduation rate. Now, DeVry has had multiple scandals, and I might actually make an entire video just on them. But in 2016, the Federal Trade Commission settled a $100 million suit against DeVry, which alleged that DeVry's advertisements deceived consumers about the likelihood that students would find jobs in their fields of study and would earn more than those graduating with bachelor's degrees from other their colleges. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Don't want to get too controversial here, but you know, do your own research. Probably wouldn't recommend this one to anybody. Number two on the list is going to be ITT Tech. Now as bad as for-profit universities are now, ITT Tech made all of them look like a bunch of choir boys. ITT Tech was basically the wolf of Wall Street of for-profit universities. Now you can see lots of Reddit posts about them. I'll pop one up on the screen, talk about how they engaged in a lot of shady practices, but allegedly they engaged in coercive and deceptive recruiting, unconscionable student loan practices, financial aid abuses, poor quality programs, and sky-high tuition. And allegedly, in the same way that the wolf of Wall Street would say anything to get people to buy his terrible penny stocks, ITT Tech would basically lie, cheat, and steal and say anything to get people to enroll in their university. Luckily, after they finally did get shut down about five years ago, students were eligible to have their student loans forgiven. Now, number one on the list isn't actually going to be a college. It's going to be an umbrella company that owned many different colleges. And there are multiple corporations like this, but the one I'm gonna talk about is the Career Education Corporation. And Brooks College was just one example of a college that was started under the umbrella corporation, known as Career Education Corporation. Brooks College in Long Beach, California, offers training in fashion and design. But these Brooks graduates have a special nickname for their alma mater. Brooks College. <laughs> Brooks College? Yeah. yeah. Why do you call it that? Because they robbed us. So this is basically a company that allegedly went all in on starting a bunch of different niche colleges that provided very little value, yet charged a ridiculous amount of money. So instead of going the route that ITT Tech or Phoenix EDU did, where they have a recognizable brand, this company was smart. They started a bunch of different little colleges, so it was very difficult to identify them as a scam. But eventually it did catch up with them, and they did have to cancel $500 million in student loan debt after fraud allegations. And that's because they allegedly lied about job placement placement rates and misled prospective students. So one thing I wanted to mention here, and I think this is probably gonna be a pretty big scandal in the future, 
is a lot of colleges and umbrella corporations are starting to get into not only just university, but also boot camps. So boot camps are supposed to be a competitor to traditional college, and I really like them in theory. Now, some do a lot better than others, but with that being said, I don't like this new trend I'm seeing where a corporation owns a bunch of different boot camps because that is basically a monopoly and it takes away all the competition. But I think that's probably a topic for another video. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other video right here. I made it just for you. Go ahead, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And I will see you next time.